Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Waterwise, and welcome back to From the Depths. Let's build. Where we're continuing with our artillery cruiser, and as tends to be the case with uh, at all long From the Depths builds, uh, as you progress with them, especially if you're building this the way I am, in which you're taking uh, extended breaks from even looking at it, uh, you get better at the game. Uh, in the interim, and you come back to it, and you're like, oh, damn it. Now I have to change things, otherwise I'm going to be so upset. Uh, yeah. So, basically, this, um, episode uh, of Let's Build, of us building the artillery cruiser, yeah, there's a lot of stuff, uh, basically I correct a lot of stuff I did before, in particular the armor, uh, because the other day... I did a video on poles because helpful people told me that poles weren't as good as I thought they were and my armor schemes weren't as good as I thought they were. And now I think about I really got to fix that stone AI compartment because stone is not EMP proofing anymore. That See, that's force of habit right there. Uh, just relying on stone to EMP proof stuff. And um, what I'm doing here though is something that I think might still be a good idea. I'm not sure. And that is kind of making a citadel with slopes on it. I um, think that uh, tends to, that might be a good idea. I don't know for sure. Um, do let me know if you think that's a dumb idea. Because as I'm fond of saying right now, I don't know armor anymore. I thought I did. But as it turns out, I do not. So, like, I probably will never know armor for the rest of my days. I just do a thing until... Somebody provides proof it's a bad idea, and then I blunder off in a different direction and do something slightly different for a while until uh, someone uh, again provides some proof that it's uh, that it's a bad idea, and the cycle begins anew. So yeah, a little bit of uh, armored citadel there, separating out the ship into uh, into like different decks, which is something I tend not to do uh, out of sheer force of habit, I guess. And we're going to put some engines in here, and so interesting decision uh, that I've made with this. I've decided since this isn't a particularly serious build anyway, it's really just an excuse, um, and I do tend to take this excuse fairly often, is uh, just to uh, have something muck around with crams a lot. Um, basically, we're not having shields or lambs on this, it's just going to rely on being as fast as possible, uh, which is a problem because this thing uh, sits low in the water, and is a kind of big thing, which means that speed isn't super good. Uh, this is mainly... I kind of envisage uh, this thing as a kind of a fortress buster. So it's like you go... You send this to just quickly a knockout uh, stationary target. So like uh, assaulting uh, like, you know, bases and stuff like that in the campaign. Because that actually is... Uh, the more I think about it, the more that is actually a kind of a good idea to have a specialized base assault vehicle. Um, because you get irritating things like, uh, hills being in the way of, um, of direct fire weapons like APS and lasers and even crams. And, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a pain in the butt. And uh, something with a lot of mortars can fire over hills and over obstacles. And if you're uh, up against, uh, particularly the Twin Guard and Steel Striders have a really nasty kind of, uh, what, what is it called? It's a railgun emplacement that's just, it's got a gigantic railgun on it and it hurts like hell. Um, and if you just get uh, faced with one of those, you can sneak a mortar ship uh, around behind a hill uh, where it can't hit you. And then you can just sit and bombard uh, the whole base and then you're mostly safe. And yeah, we're mostly just setting up uh, the, a the, a the AI. I guess it is AI, but the AA secondaries on this graph because it does need a little bit, just a little bit, and I believe, it's been some time since I recorded this footage, I believe uh, I test against the uh, Deepwater Guard Tortuga. So, yeah, so that, that, is, um, that is a decent, uh, good test to uh, see if, uh, if the thing works, and that's, of course, me going back and changing the channels uh, on all my little local weapon controller TVs, because that's a good idea. Uh, have to set it up to the right AI. And then I am using the new, uh, what do you call it? The uh, uh, the all-in-one local weapon controller, simply because, I don't know, I was feeling lazy. Uh, it's not that I feel lazy often, so if you ever wonder why I sometimes deliberately take uh, the worst choice um, for... 
uh, for doing stuff in front of the depths. It is just that. It's just simply because, like, I don't have time in my life. I uh, have less than 100 years on this earth. I'm not going to spend it worrying excessively uh, about uh, just, you know, optimizing stuff in a very complicated video game. If the thing does what I wanted to do roughly, I will be happy. And uh, if it doesn't, then I build something from scratch. Uh, so anyway, wow, we were talking about death already. That was quick. Well done, me. Thanks, me. Stop talking about death and start talking about guns, because that's not death-related at all. Uh, so yeah, so just going off the superstructure that I poached, um, excuse me, borrowed off the... Uh, superstructure platform that I showed off last time. Highly recommend it. Lots of superstructure on that, and it is super structure. And I just put a I just put a bunch of slopes in there. I don't know why it just felt right. Uh, just so those um, those AI components are nice and covered. And this is the point where I look inside the hull armor and remember to my and remember that oh no, I did the pole thing. That's not good. And so I spend a merry few minutes uh, making the armor scheme a bit more sensible because it doesn't make sense to have uh, multiple layers of air gap filler, which poles and slopes and wedges actually are. Uh, you might as well have, and the math bears this out by the way, uh, you might as well have multiple layers of uh, stacked armor, so that's just regular beams, and then you only really need one air gap filler to essentially fill where you would put an air gap usually. So in this case, uh, we're changing it up a little bit and putting metal poles there, and the reason uh, I'm doing it like this, it's not super optimized, it's just uh, somewhat better than nothing, uh, of two layers of metal, a layer of alloy, and then a layer of metal poles, is that's Hesh proofing. So, uh, what that means is, is that Hesh, uh, the spalling AP of the fragments it spawns, is the average of all the armor layers it passes through, so that alloy uh, functions as a little bit of a spall liner, uh, to bring the average down so it doesn't do full damage to those poles. And if the poles get destroyed, so it doesn't do full damage to the layer of metal just behind it. Or was that a layer of alloy? I don't remember. I literally am looking at this and I'm already forgetting stuff about it. Which isn't great. Also, one thing I should definitely do in uh, future versions... Future versions... Uh, future episodes of this... Is tweak the mortars. I might do that off screen because... Uh, the craft that I have been happily banging on about for set for quite a few videos in a row now, the BBS fifth season. Man, I love that thing. It's a it's a real inspirational uh, vehicle because it's inspired uh, me to get off my ass and like work on armor and guns and all that stuff and build a new battleship and everything. Um, but yeah, the mortars on that uh, have a muzzle velocity of about 175 meters per second and thought and. Uh, I think that extra muzzle velocity might actually make them a little bit more reliable in terms of hitting things. I usually go for 150 meters, um, but uh, I might experiment uh, with seeing how these mortars do when they're just a little bit faster. Uh, they might hit things more reliably in that case. So yeah, just redoing the armor, and then we get all the way back here uh, to the rear of the ship. Uh, where I realize I haven't actually finished the armoring job, so... And here we go again, just modifying the deck a little bit more. And I am a little bit lazy uh, with this, I just only go far a little bit. Uh, because the important part is the... I don't know, the important part is the main uh, hull, I guess. And here we have the fun job of... Uh, Prefabbing the thing so it's a uh, reasonably uniform uh, armor thickness uh, as much as possible. Just going chink, 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 prefab, prefab. And this stands up to. I actually did uh, extra combat test earlier, uh, just reminding myself of what the hell this thing is. And I probably should armor this thing's butt a little bit more. You can see I stopped with the layers back there. Uh, because I didn't think it would be a problem. Turns out it is a problem because I was testing it against uh, the bulwark and it's got it. It got its butt shot off, like the artillery cruiser, not the bulwark. Um, aside from that, it completely rocked the bulwark, by the way, which is a good thing because it's more expensive than the bulwark. It would be uh, quite distressing if it lost, really. Uh, it would uh, cause much emotional harm and would require me to go back to my therapist. Uh, hey, there's a fun thing that happened in my life. I saw a therapist. Uh, I 
am not brain damaged. That's good to know. But, um, yeah, it's just, it's just, I don't know. I don't know if I've ever mentioned on the channel, but I have a slight case uh, of Asperger syndrome, so I'm on the shallow end of the autism spectrum. And, um, yeah, it turns out that uh, has been affecting my brain a lot more than I thought uh, it had. Um, just in terms of, like, how I think of things, how I imagine situations, stuff like that. Sparing you the detail. And... Alright, so this is where we... Alright, so moving on from mental health, we're going to talk about uh, this. So, I think this is going pretty well. I think I actually spot something uh, wrong. Yeah, so there's a problem right there. Uh, this is why testing your craft multiple times and testing is a good idea. So, we're testing that. Yeah, so the main AI um, was targeting the Super Tweeties of the, of the Tortuga, the little cram bombers. Uh, and that's no good, because we want them to aim for the big stuff. Uh, probably also, I think I do replace the mortars with uh, versions that actually aim sensibly at stuff. Uh, but in any case, uh, what are you doing now, Borduas? Oh yeah, you forgot to do that, you dummy. You big fat dummy. Right, so you go there. And you go there, and there we go. So what was I thinking? Oh yeah, so do want to set up all the target priority so it targets uh, that which you prioritize very important and you want to set up the gun so they actually fire that's also a good idea uh, but yeah so yeah I, I had a train of thought something to do with autism but we're not going to go there suffice to say my brain is healthy I was just using it wrong um, and that is not going to be surprising to anyone it's like it was surprising to me but uh, now I think about it, it's like, well, I mean, that's, that's, that's kind of normal. It's just, you've got a brain, you've got all the cap capabilities of it, and you were just using the wrong thoughts in it. So that's fine. I'm doing better now. Amazing how talking to a professional can... I urge everybody to see a therapist at least once, just to check on your brain. Just to check if there's anything that uh, you could uh, be doing better brain-wise. Because you never know. Like, you might be completely screwed and not know it. Uh, speaking of completely screwed, it is great. Um, I do like uh, this combination of, uh, like, the simple weapons, the, like, the simple projectile ones and the custom shell ones, because uh, they kind of fill in for each other a little bit. Also, I really need to tweak the uh, detection settings on this thing, because you'll notice that... Uh, I thought uh, the mortars were falling short just because of things moving. Uh, it turns out that no, uh, they're falling short because the detection on this thing is not ideal. Uh, so that's not good. Also the fact that these guys are shooting at tiny planes is no good, so... The, ah yeah, so this is the part where we just go and we just uh, quickly tweak. Uh, yeah, so maximum speed, or you can tweak that. So make sure they're aiming for blocks. I really should have treated the maximum speed as well, because anything over 60 meters per second, forget it. These things aren't really going to hit it. Um, so I really should go back and do that again. Uh, I always make more work for myself, don't I? Uh, boy. Such is from the depths. Such is from the depths. So yeah, it's like... Alright, so this is where I'm thinking, like, maybe... Maybe we can shield those barrels a bit better just by adding something like that. Adding some kind of a raised barrier. And I thought about it, and I decided, nope, let's not do that. Incidentally, like, I don't think I commented on it, but uh, the uh, uh, those little, I guess, detection hardpoints are for the secondary weapons. I like doing that a lot because it just means you, I have got, I've got the prefab and you just slap it down wherever and there you go. And we're going with the big steam props. The big, big, big steam props. Big, big, big because we've got the engine power for it. Or at least we will in a hot second. And I always put in the shafts wrong first. Uh, be, no, take note, guys. Uh, when you put your shaft uh, in... Uh, make sure you do it correctly, but if you don't do it correctly, don't worry. You can you can fix it. Don't be embarrassed. It can happen to anybody. Uh, like, you know, you got to make mistakes with your shaft uh, before you know how to properly place it. 
Um, I'm sure I don't know what uh, what I'm uh, what I'm. There's no way that'll be taken the wrong way. Anyway, more engines. So the Caterpillar Katarina, which I really, I really like using this thing because it's just a nice middle of the road engine. Like there's nothing fancy about it. It's not the most efficient thing in the world, but it's a nice combination of easy to squeeze into uh, tight spaces, uh, like the shaft, and. Uh, like powerful and also somewhat efficient so I tend to use this thing a lot more uh, I use it more than injector engines these days uh, which will be come as some relief to the uh, engine nerds in the audience yes I know you're there oh the engine nerds they are almost as much fun as the armor and APS nerds in the from the depths community oh boy I love you guys but anyway so what are we doing with now, I think, what is this? Is this a combat test? Yes, alright, so here we've got maneuvers. We've got sweet maneuvers, dudes. And dudettes. And people. And ship and tank, very, very standard. Reverse is enabled because I'm trying to force myself to use reverse. Uh, because it might actually be a very handy thing to do. And I'm also forcing myself, uh, since we've got this lovely uh, bulge uh, down here, uh, to use turning props because like turning props are actually kind of useful I know who would have thought and um, yeah so uh, yeah forcing myself to use these because it means that the thing can turn on the spot and uh, I don't know a lot of people I just fell out of the habit of using them for the longest time because I thought like, like maybe you shouldn't use shouldn't use turning that requires power I was like yes you should you absolutely should don't be a dummy use it so now we've got a ship that turns, and uh, it's got an aesthetic bottom and an aesthetic front. I do need to armor up that bottom a little bit more, uh, but this will not do. I'm going to be cheeky and do that thing that I do uh, in the wet space of a lot of my craft, uh, which is uh, using uh, basically just lots of propellers down here. So small propellers, uh, I think, get a bit of a bad rap usually. Uh, but they're great for stuff like this uh, in small tight spaces that you can't uh, sneak uh, larger propellers into uh, you can uh, stick smaller ones and I'm just actually doing this hitting the fill um, and just keeping an eye on the engines uh, to use up as much engine power as possible uh, without overdoing it so now we're going over 22 meters per second and over 25 meters per second so that's decent for a ship that's uh, this much into the water uh, that's pretty good actually we do need more fuel so we're gonna uh, first place uh, not a great uh, fuel block uh, because that I don't know I guess that just made me sad and then doop doop there we go and we're good and set broadside save and now I believe there's a, just a bunch of combat testing, and I test this. What do I test this against? Crossbones, because why not? Really do need to tweak the uh, uh, tweak the detection. I think I might add bearing range finders onto the main turrets because why not? Why not? They've got room on them. Why not, indeedy? Incidentally, I think the main guns on this thing are way scarier than the mortars because that combination of uh, um, somewhat hardened uh, hollow point. Uh, and EMP and HE like it hurts like hell it tends to fry the brains of a lot of craft uh, like right there for instance it's um, it's managed to knock out uh, the AI on the crossbones and essentially turn its main guns off which is very handy and then the mortars come along and they blow up turrets and stuff like that the mortars on this are decent uh, I've actually gotten more practice with mortars since designing those but at this point, I don't feel like replacing them completely, because simply because it's like, you know what? I just like having, you know, lots of mortar spam. It's fun. And you notice uh, the thing is stopped. F Has it stopped fine? Yep, so AI dead right there, and that was the main guns. So top speed of around 36 meters per second, which is pretty decent for such a... For kind of like, you know, such... What is it? Actually kind of a big ship. It's a cruiser for sure. Um... Because it cruises, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I gotta, I gotta stick more detection here, there, and everywhere. I just gotta... Uh, but first, uh, you gotta stick some smoke on there. So, I hope everyone can appreciate that uh, there is some aesthetic superstructure 
stuff going on here. So it's got uh, like a forward tower and a rear tower and smokestacks in the middle, and then just way too many mortars. Uh, actually, aesthetic tips for that mortar compartment in the middle might be kind of kind of good. Um, I'm not sure what to put there. All right, so here is the sad story of countermeasures, and I might need to uh, muck around with uh, missile interceptors for this thing, because for whatever reason, like even though it, uh, the above deck uh, portions of the ship is mostly alloy, it um, it is mostly it does have a giant radar signature, which makes it a lot harder to uh, use decoy missiles on it, uh, which is unfortunate. But uh, yeah, we'll get to that, and you get to see the misadventures for now. Railings, which and I will never place railings for real on my ships ever again. Now that I know uh, the decoration shortcut, as soon as I can figure it out. So there we go, and then you do that, and then you do this, and like and also figuring out which bleeding rail to use. There we go, because I never like putting rails for real on my ship because it's a waste of materials and block count. Because they don't do anything except look look cool. And I can't abide that at all. Uh, so there we go there. And now, uh, give me a second. I will remember that prefabbing is a thing right about... Right about... Okay. Give him, give past Borderwise a moment. He's going to remember about half... The, there we go. He's remembered. He's remembered that this is actually quicker. You can see railings for everybody, railings for everybody. This is as good as the paint tool, actually, uh, which I probably am going to use for this now. Now that I think about it, in the final episode of this let's build, uh, be pretty good. I actually think that the well, okay, no, it can't um, because the mortars get shot down. Uh, but I am wondering if one way to cheese a really strong craft like the Megalodon is to essentially hide behind an island uh, so it can't shoot you and then just rain mortars and I guess missiles down on it. That'd be fun. Actually, I get better main guns for this craft would be APS, I think, because um, the APS just shoot down anything that the mortars can't handle and against big stuff, which is a threat to a ship of this size, uh, you get the mortars to handle it, so I think that would be fan dabby dozy. Are you going to save, Borderwise? I do remember you saving. Uh, what are you doing? I think I must have been doing something else right now. I don't remember what I was doing. Maybe I was scratching my bum. Uh, but yeah, I think I got distracted, and then yes, alright, so missile countermeasures. That is important. That is important because it's important. Missiles hurt a lot. So, I start off with uh, trying to be cute and using long medium missiles, uh, because you can jam more of them in there, and uh, they are cheaper, and uh, yeah, so I thought that would work, and it kind of works and kind of doesn't. Incidentally, uh, when testing your countermeasures, you really should test against something that has signal processes on it, so you can be sure that uh, it works as often as possible. And that's just me counting how long these missiles are, so I know how to uh, how to spread them out. So lots of sticky flares, lots of radar target simulators. It is nice that, that the, I remember when this wasn't an option, and you had to make do with sonar boys and radar boys, not boys as in these are the boys, they're my crew, boys as in things that float on the ocean and you know they help you see stuff, and those had to be the decoys and uh, didn't really work very well. Man, those were the days. Like, it's hard not to get nostalgic uh, if you've been playing From the Depths or making content uh, on it, as a random example, for ages. Because, like, the game has changed so much. Mostly for the better, I have to say. In fact, I'm trying to think of a change in which I really did not like. But what is something that changed that I really didn't, uh, didn't like? Um, oh, yeah, I remember. A direct input fed APS. Um, and for those of you who don't know, if you put a... Okay, so this is for a... Just quickly, like, I was going to make uh, torpedo interceptors over there. Uh, that um, I never got around to, but I did manage to stick a passive sonar down there, which is nice, I guess. But anyway, uh, on the note of uh, 
uh, updates and changes to front of the devs that I didn't like. Very few, but one of the first that come to mind is direct input fed APS uh, was nerfed into the ground uh, because there's a basically inputs that are attached directly to the firing piece uh, take 100% longer to load a shell, which means that um, if you have, say, a direct input fed APS with four inputs on it, uh, it will fire only half as fast as the same APS. Uh, but with four autoloaders with the inputs attached on it. So, yeah, that uh, made me very sad because it's like, it's really not... I don't think it was a very necessary change because direct input fit guns are m not super reliable and they never have the same DPS as a properly made APS a system with loaders anyway. So, yeah, I'm still... I've bummed myself out now. Maybe that'll get reversed one day, maybe not. But, speaking of being bummed out, you'll see that uh, half of the missiles off that Hornet's Nest are completely ignoring the decoys. And I was wondering about what exactly was happening there. It turns out those were probably the radar-guided ones. Um, because as you can see, um, the a lot of the missiles off the Palisade aren't being distracted by these either. In fact, none of them are. Um, because, well, signal processors. And I didn't even wait to see uh, those missiles uh, hurt the feelings and the body and the hull of my ship. So now we're testing it again with a little bit more radar. Yeah, the radar, yeah, over a hundred thousand meters of uh, range with radar detection. This thing is like stands out a lot in terms of radar. It's really annoying. And I think uh, if my memory is correct, only two of the missiles off this uh, Palisade volley uh, get pulled. Uh, actually, never mind. None of them do. Absolutely none of them do. And that is unfortunate. So, back to the drawing board. Back to the drawing of the board. And just basically, yeah, we're just mucking around with countermeasures. Uh, yeah, and that's still not enough, by the way. You need... This thing needs a really big uh, radar signature in order to distract it. Incidentally, this would have been a very good idea to use chaff. Like, because I keep forgetting that's a thing, and I might actually add that uh, in future, because if you have something with a giant radar signature, uh, just having a, a chaff, uh, what do you call it, a chaff emitter, uh, to reduce its radar signature would be a very, very smart move. But I wasn't smart when building this, I was just thinking... What was I thinking? I think I was looking at the time limit thinking, uh, I want to get something workable before the video ends, because I'm not going to remember to do it next time, except maybe I will remember to do it next time, and maybe I won't. So now we're going to large missiles, uh, because I guess that's what we go for. So sticky flare, sticky flare, and that's still not big enough. You'll actually notice it's hardly any bigger than the uh, medium missiles that we were using before. And that's me checking the radar signature again, which is still huge. 100,000 meters. Ugh. Definitely need chaff. Definitely need chaff. I think actually what's doing it is just all those cram barrels. In fact, uh, that is uh, what I'm doing here, is just essentially blocking off the cram barrels uh, uh, with alloy slopes, which hopefully uh, would do something, uh, but apparently it doesn't do it, so never mind. It was a good idea, except it was a terrible idea, as it turns out. So, uh, that's too bad for me. Too bad for me, indeed. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much, I guess, like, the rest of this video is just fiddling around with the countermeasures. And just hoping like hell that they can, that, uh, we can distract at least a few of those missiles. Sea Wiz would be a good idea, except apparent I haven't left enough room for them. You really got to plan ahead if you're going to use it. There we go. See, that's much more like it. Uh, but still, uh, not enough missiles getting pulled because even one of those missiles hurts like hell. It takes up just a chunk, even out of an armored ship. And also, as... Uh, Alright, so we're firing back at the Palisade now just for giggles. Um, but uh, you'll notice in a bit is that a lot of those missiles that were pulled, they come straight back down uh, directly on top of us. And that's AI dead, so that's, uh, or, no, not AI dead yet. So, yeah, you see there that those things coming down from a great altitude, uh, they got pulled up into the stratosphere, and then, yep, there they are, and they're coming straight back down. So, 
Congratulations. Um, uh, decoys, you bought us time, but nothing more. Uh, but then Mortar Revenge happens, and I guess we're okay. Thank goodness for God Mode and trying things out. It is awesome to see it fire off volleys like that. It is really cool and fun. I've actually forgotten whether those are... I think those are uh, armor-penetrating mortars. I think they've got some hardeners on them. And, uh, yep, that's me just uh, patching that quickly, because, eh... I guess that's that, and that is that, pretty much. So, yeah, liking how this is going. Uh, but, yeah, still some things to review, still some things to tweak. Uh, but mostly done. Uh, do need to slap some more detection on it. And better detection. I need to work out proper countermeasures, not only for missiles, but also for, for torpedoes. And, yeah, and if you have suggestions, uh, feel free to share. Can't guarantee I'll act on them, because I haven't left enough room on this ship. Uh, unless I replace some of the mortars, which is absolutely out of the question. And, well, thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Support me on Patreon or YouTube membership if you like. It really helps. And there's fun perks in it for you. Thank you to all my current supporters. And I will see you next time in From the Depths. Let's build. Farewell.